Hi everyone, this is Tufel. I'm lecturer at Yumbo English Language Institute. Today, I'm going to explain in brief the basic learning objectives of English 000 for week five and six. As you understand, in any English language course, we have different skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing, and of course, grammar. And today I'm going to explain that in week number five and week number six, what are the learning objectives for the students? First of all, our students in the week number five and six, they should be able to mention a place in a city and are able to answer some basic questions about any place and its location. For example, the question can be, what's that? The answer, it's a royal place. Or the question can be, where is it? Or where is it located? It is located next to the hospital. So the students should be able to learn different names of places in any town, city, or a village. And also they should be able to explain the location using different prepositions like next to, beside, among, etc. The second objective of these two weeks is the students should be able to identify and mention the names of different vehicles, signs of directions and locations. For example, they should be able to talk about the vehicles and transportations like, for example, cars, buses, trains, aeroplanes, etc. And they should be able to explain where are different things. For example, the question can be, where are the taxis? And the answer can be, they are there, or they are near the gas station, or they are behind the park, next to the college, far from here, next to the bank. In this way, students should be able to talk about different transportation systems and its locations. Our third objective for these two weeks should be the students should be able to name and describe different fruits and they should be able to describe their colors with different adjectives. For example, adjectives could be it's sweet, sour, tasty, etc. They should also be able to explain different colors, for example, green, orange, yellow colors. And they should be able to describe different fruit by describing with different colors. For example, uh, a lemon is yellow. Our learning objective number four is the student should be able to talk about various countries, nationalities, and currencies. For example, the United States of America name is the name of a country and its currency is dollar, which is also called as a nickname bucks. In this way, students will learn about Great Britain, the currency is pounds, the country is Japan, the currency is yen, etc. So students should be able to understand the names of different countries and they should be able to use them in their talking and in their writing the country's names and different currencies. Our next objective for these two weeks is the students should be able to ask and answer the WH questions, for example, what, where, how, etc. And the students should be able to ask the question with WH words and they should be able to answer the questions properly. For example, where do you live? Where are you from? The answer could be, I live in Paris and I am from France. Our next objective for these two weeks is the students should be able to understand, talk and write about different possessions. And of course, when you, they are talking about different possessions or items they have, they should be able to use different possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. For example, our possession items could be our mobile phones, cameras, sunglasses, watch, skateboards, or anything which we have in our house, in our life, in our college, anywhere. They are our possessions. To describe that if you have something, 
you have to use possessive adjective. For example, this is my camera. My is a possessive adjective here. Or we can explain the same thing by using possessive pronouns. For example, whose camera is this? It's mine. In this sentence, mine is a possessive pronoun. So in this way, students should be able to use different subject pronoun. For example, I, you, he, she, it, we, or they. And they should be able to use a possessive adjective for every subject pronoun. For example, my is a possessive adjective for I, your for you, his for he, her for she, its for it, our for we, and their for they. Same way, the student should be able to use their possessive pronouns. For example, it's mine, it's yours, it's his, it's hers. Generally, it's possessive is not very common to be used as a possessive pronoun. So, but we can use it's ours or it's theirs. So in this way, students should be able to describe and use different possessions using possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. Our next objective for these two weeks, which is objective number six, is the students should be able to read, write, speak, and recognize different numbers, especially from 30 to 1000 because they have already covered from 1 to 20 so in these two weeks they will go from 30 onward so in this way students should be able to mention the numbers the digit and also they should be able to spell and name the uh, number for example they should be able to know the spelling of 30 t h i r t y in this way from 30 to basically 200 300 and then they could mention 1000 2000 etc our next learning objective is grammar of understanding and using articles. As we know, in English language, there are three articles, a and the. And our students should know that a is used before a noun, which is singular, and the noun first letter starts with a consonant. For example, this is a pharmacy. This is a table. Article N is used before a singular noun where the first letter is a vowel. A, E, I, R, U. For example, this is an airport. This is an orange. At the same time, the student should be able to use different prepositions like next to, far from, between, across, etc. And they should be able to answer the question, where is something? For example, what's there and where is that? The answer to what's there is, there is a pharmacy. And the answer to where is that is, the pharmacy is next to the bookstore. So the student can say, there is a pharmacy next to the bookstore. There is an airport near the city and the city is very big. You can see the article used is for something very specific or it is mentioned to something which has already been mentioned. For example, there is an airport near the city. Now, I have already mentioned the city. So, when I mentioned about that city again, I would say the city is very big. For example, there are many students in my class. The student sitting on the right side is, is a very good student. There are many chairs in my class. The chair on the right side is mine. Our next objective is the students should be able to use demonstrative in writing and in speaking. As we know that in English language, there are four demonstratives which are basically everybody should understand. They are this, that, these, and those. This is used for something singular which is near to you and that is used for something singular which is far away from you. Same wise, for something plural, if the things are more than one, we use these for the things which are near and those for those things which are away from us. For example, something is sitting next in front of me, it's called this is a book. 
the book is here. And something which is at a distance, I can say, that book. It means the book is at a distance from me. Same is the case for plural, we use these for something near and those which is something at a distance. In grammar, our next objective is that our students should be able to ask and answer the questions by using how much and how many. As we know, that how much is used for something which is uncountable noun. For example, you can't count them. And how many is used in a question when you are asking about something which is a countable noun. So, how much is used for something, it could be a liquid. For example, how much water do you like? How much milk? How much juice? How much is also can be used for something which is very, very small and it's difficult to count it. So in a simple language, we can say something which is smaller than rice or sugar, or same the size of a sugar. So we say how much sugar, how much rice. Also for something which you have to cut into pieces to serve, like a gentleman. For example, there's a huge bread, but when, when, when we have to cut into pieces to serve, we say, how much bread? How much do you like? But th those things which can be counted, like one, two, three, they are countable. For example, people, shirts, chairs, tables, dogs, bananas. So for countable things, we use how many. For example, how many students are in the class? How many bananas do you like? So students should be able to use how much for something uncountable nouns and how many for countable nouns. So students should be also able to use ask and answer questions by using different possessive adjective and possessive pronoun. For example, if the question is who, who is she? She is my sister. Who are they? They are my students. Whose is this? Now whose is used for some possession. Whose table is this? Whose chair is this? The answer could be this is my table or this is mine. So students should be able to use different possessive to ask and answer the questions. In grammar, our students should be able to understand, write, and speak irregular plurals of different nouns. They should know where to use S before, uh, with the regular nouns to make plural, for example, car, one car, two cars. They should be able to understand that if a word is ending with sh, ch, sh, x, z, we call them hissing sounds. If a word is ending with a hissing sound, the plural is made by adding es at the end. For example, one bus, two buses. One quiz, two quizzes. But if any word is ending with f, letter f, or f sound like fe, like one leaf, one life, if you want to make it a plural, you have to remove f or fe and then convert F to V and add ES. It means you have to add VES. For example, life, two lives. One knife, two knives. If a word is ending, any noun is ending with Y, and before Y, y there is a vowel sound like A, E, I, or U. We simply add S to make the plural nouns. For example, one day, two days. Because the word is ending with Y and before Y is a vowel, so you'll just add a S to make it a plural. But if the last letter is Y, the last ending letter of any uh, noun is Y, and before Y is not a vowel but a consonant, so in this case Y will be changed with I and then we will put ES at the end. For example, city, C I T Y. As last is Y and before Y is T, which is a consonant letter. So in this case, Y will be trans changed to I and then we'll add ES. One city, two cities. One party, two parties. One country, two countries. At the same time, we should know that there are some irregular nouns. It means there is no formula for changing the singular to plural. 
So they are as they are. For example, generally they use some spellings or they are totally different. For example, one man, two men, A will be changed to E. One tooth, T double O T H will be changed to T double E T H, teeth. But one person should be uh, changed to two people, three people, etc. In English, if the last letter is O and before O is a vowel, for example, zoo, Z double O. Last is O and before O is another vowel, so you'll just add S to make the plural. For example, one zoo, two zoos. But if any noun is ending in consonant and after the consonant, there is an O, for example, like hero, H E R O. Last is O and before O is a consonant, R. So in this case, we'll add ES to make a plural. For example, one hero, two heroes. One tomato, two tomatoes. There are some nouns where there is no change. Their singular and plural are same. For example, one sheep, two sheep. One deer, two deer. One fish, two fish. There is no change in singular and plural in this case. One more point which is very important to mention that our students in the, these week number five and six, they are supposed to add to their vocabulary 25 nouns, 25 verbs, 10 expressions and phrases and 15 adjectives to complete a list of 500 commonly used basic words. So in this case, the student should be able to know about and how to use those 500 basic words. And those words list uh, in every week students keep increasing by adding the new words they learn and students are expected that they know how to use these almost 500 commonly used words by the end of week number six. Thank you very much. I hope this presentation will be beneficial for you. I wish you all the best. Thank you.